Hi everyone, now I'm going to show you my personal assistant a agent in action. Hi Emily, can you please call Mark and ask if we can meet tomorrow at 7 a.m. in the office to discuss the onboarding of two new clients? And if that works for him, send him a confirmation email and also update my calendar. So I should receive a call in a second from my personal assistant. So the, the main agent is looking for Mark's mobile number uh, in the contacts data stored in a Google Sheet and is calling a sub agents. Yep. Hi, I'm Emily, Damien's personal assistant. Hi, Emily, how can I help you? Hi, Mark, Damien asks if you can meet tomorrow at 7 a.m in the office to discuss the onboarding of two new clients. Uh, yes, no problem, that, that works for me. Great, great. I'll inform Damien. Uh, can, Thank you. Can you ask Thank him if I need to prepare anything? I will check with Damien and get back to you shortly. All right, Thank, Thank you, bye-bye. Yes, so now the supervisor agent is calling the sub-agents, so email and calendar agents. And I should get a confirmation email and have a meeting booked in my calendar. So let's check my inbox. Yeah, that's great. And my calendar. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so now I'm going to walk you through each note and explain everything. I communicate with Emily via Telegram because it's the easiest way and it's also free. But you can easily integrate with other apps such as WhatsApp, Slack, etc. As you can see here in Telegram, I got a confirmation from my agent summarizing everything. She also passed on what I asked her as Mark, confirmed that she sent an email to Mark, updated my calendar and even added a link to make it easy to access. I'm Damien, I'm an AI and software engineer with over 10 years of programming experience and degree in software engineering and AI. But on this channel, I will teach you how to build powerful AI agents and automations using no-code and low-code tools. I've been running my AI automation agency for about two years now. So join my free newsletter, where I share all my AI agent and automation templates, guides how to start your uh, own agency, and tips how to automate your business and life to save time and money. Uh, I've had a lot of requests to start a private community. So if you are interested, just fill out the form in the description, check all the links and let's get started. For those who don't know, I built this AI agent in N8N. N8N is the best no-code platform for building AI agents and automation. You can self-host it to use it for free. And I've got a tutorial on how to do it in just three minutes. So check it out. Or you could pay $20 monthly for the cloud service. You can find a link to the cloud version below. I've got more N8N tutorials on my channel to teach you how to build powerful AI agents, even if you are a complete beginner, so you don't need to be a programmer and anyone can do this. If you want to skip the slightly more technical setup of self-hosting, you can easily sign up for their cloud service instead. For this tutorial, I strongly recommend using their cloud service as you can test it for free for 14 days without payment details. Using the link in the description helps support my channel. If you don't have an account, simply click on get started. Fill in your full name, email, password and a unique username. Then click on try for free. You will land in the N8N dashboard. Click on open. Now we have to create our workflow from scratch. So start from scratch. Now, if you prefer dark mode, go to settings in the left menu. Click on these three dots. Settings. Scroll down. And switch to dark theme. Hit save. And voila, apart from the three sub agents, so phone call, calendar, and email agents. I've added a vector database as another tool for Emily. 
So in short, Emily is trained on Google Docs stored in my Google Drive. So this is my company's um, knowledge base. So if I ask her, for example, what is Adaptive AI? She knows exactly what's included in that document and can answer straight away. This means she can remind me about my agency SOPs, past project details, uh, training materials, and much more. So she is very helpful. You can add more tools to Emily, like want to do research uh, or analyze competitors uh, or create reports. The very first step is this trigger node, which listens for incoming events. So every time I send a voice or text message to Emily, the workflow is activated thanks to that node. I've got a quick tutorial on my channel showing how to set up Telegram as a communication tool for a agents in three minutes. So when a new event is detected, the trigger captures it and passes it, to it along to the rest of the workflow. So any interaction with Emily on Telegram automatically starts the process. Great, now with this in place, Emily is officially ready to listen to us on Telegram. So next, once our Telegram trigger has captured an event, this node determines content type, so acts as a decision maker and analyzes the incoming messages to figure out whether it's a text, voice note, or something else. So this node uses simple rules to check for key properties in the coming data. For example, if the message contains a text field, we know it's a regular text message. And if it has a file ID in the voice field, it's an audio message and so on. So based on these rules, the workflow branches out, text messages go one way, audio another, and errors like unsupported content types take a separate path. This ensures Emily can handle every input. For example, if it's a voice message, the workflow prepares to download and transcribe it. If it's text, it moves forward to process the message. So every type of input is handled in the right way. Now, when someone sends a voice message, download voice file node, takes the file ID from the incoming audio message and downloads the actual audio directly from the Telegram. Great, so now when the voice message is ready for the next phase of the workflow, the file is prepared so it can be transcribed into text and the AI agent can understand its content. This note uses OpenAI's Whisper model to, to do the transcription and this model works great even if there is an accent or some background noise. So the node takes the audio file, processes it, and spits out plain text. For example, if I send a voice message saying what's on my calendar tomorrow, the node turns that into a text message. This text is what Emily uses to figure out what you want her to do next. So now let's move on. The next node, combine content. So we have the input and it can be text or a transcribed voice message, right? So this node pull everything together and add some labels. So it combines it into a single va variable called combined message. This way, no matter how the message was sent, Emily processes it in the same way. So it figures out the type of message, like if it's a text query or a voice message, and tags it with message type. So if the message was provided, it adds a little label in source type to know that. Now that everything's sorted, we are ready to send it over to Emily's brain, so the main agent. Now, Emily processes the, the message and decides what needs to be done. 
So basically, Emily works as a as a supervisor agent and delegates tasks to the three sub agents work, working under her. So first, make phone call agent. If you ask Emily to make a call, she passes the details like the name, phone number, and what to say to this agent to handle it. Next, calendar agent. So for anything related to your schedule, like checking availability, adding or checking events, Emily hands it over to this agent. And the last one, email agent. This one handles emails. So whether it's sending, replying or setting up drafts. But Emily is smart, so she's, she always checks the contacts data. A Google Sheet in Google Drive to make sure the email address is valid before sending anything. Now, really important part of this AI agent and how it works is the prompt. So it's basically the set of instructions that tells Emily how to handle different tasks. So the prompt is super specific and even includes variables like the current date and others. So Emily always has the right context for what she is doing. So as you can see, it's very detailed. For example, it reminds her to check the contact list before sending an email or to make sure phone numbers are formatted correctly before making a call, such as adding a country code. So once again, Emily works as the supervisor agent and delegates tasks to the three sub agents. And each of these sub agents is included in separate workflows. So this keeps everything modular and easy to manage, like in object oriented programming. So let's start with uh, make phone call agent. This sub agent uses VAPI, which is a voice API platform to make the calls. When Emily needs to handle a phone call request, she gathers all the necessary details, like the name of the person and the type of contact, like uh, if it's a friend or business, and specific instructions for the call, such as ask if they are available to meet tomorrow. So once Emily has all this information, she passes it to the make phone call agent, which then triggers a workflow called make a phone call path. So this is the make a phone call agent. This agent uses VAPI to handle the actual call. And after the call is made, the response from the workflow comes back to Emily. So she knows what happened and can continue with the task. So this setup ensures that each sub agent focuses on its specific job while Emily oversees everything and makes sure it all works together as expected. So next, let's look at the calendar agent. So this is our calendar agent. So when Emily handles anything related to scheduling, like checking availability or adding events, she passes the details to this agent. Basically, this separate workflow is dedicated to managing your calendar. It processes the request updates or retrieves the event information and sends the results back to Emily. From there, Emily uses the response to provide you with the uh, updates or confirmations. Now the email agent. So Emily first checks the contacts uh, data, a Google Sheet, to make sure the recipient's email address is valid. And once verified, the email agent triggers a separate workflow to handle the email task. So the workflow sends the email and then returns a confirmation on response back to Emily. Now let's look at the knowledge base node. So this node is connected to find convector store, which allows Emily to access and retrieve specific information stored in database. So you can store all sorts of documents in Pinecone. This could be Google Docs, spreadsheets like Google Sheets, company policies, etc. So you can give Emily access for, to, for example, frequently asked questions, uh, client uh, details, 
SOPs, training materials, or any other knowledge base. So Emily can retrieve this content and fetch accurate answers by pulling directly from your stored information. For example, if you ask Emily something about your company or any stored knowledge, this node searches through the vector database for the most relevant information and sends it back. And the response is then passed to Emily and based on that, she can provide a relevant answer. So the Pinecoin Vector Store node is where all the knowledge is kept. It stores the information in a way that makes it easy to search and find later. So all the knowledge is converted into numerical representations called embeddings. So AI can understand it. Embeddings are small, easy to search versions of your data that can help large language models find exactly what they need. And when Emily sends something, this node searches through the embeddings to find the best match and sends the results to the knowledge base back. So from there, it's formatted and passed to Emily. So she can use it to answer your question. And if you want me to make a tutorial on how to quickly and easily set up Pinecon and create a vector store, let me know in the comments below. So this node generates embeddings for the data stored in a Pinecon vector store. And whenever you add new information to the database, this node processes it, creating embeddings that make it easy to search and retrieve later. So it's a key part of keeping the knowledge base up to date. Now let's talk about the window buffer memory node. So this one. This node helps Emily keep track of the context during conversations by storing short-term memory. It allows Emily to remember recent interactions so she can handle follow-up questions without losing track of what you are talking about. For example, if you ask, what's, what's on my calendar tomorrow? And then follow up with, can you add a meeting at 3 p.m.? Emily can connect those requests and respond. However, this is not a persistent memory like the Pinecon vector store. Once the session ends, the memory from this node is cleared, so it's designed for short-term use within the same conversation. Now, this OpenAI chat model is connected directly to Emily and acts as her brain. So when Emily needs to process a request, like understanding a message or deciding what to do next, this node uses OpenAI large language model to interpret the input and provide a response. For example, if you ask Emily to send an email, this node helps analyze the message, um, figure out the context and decide what to do next. I've got a quick five minute tutorial on my channel showing how to connect all OpenAI models to your AI agents. So be sure to check it out. While this OpenAI chat model works with the knowledge base, when the Pinecon vector store finds the information Emily needs, this node helps turn it into a clear response she can share with you. For example, if you ask about company policies, this node takes the data from Pinecon, processes it, and turns it into an easy to understand answer. And in this setup, both OpenAI chat model nodes, so this one and this one, use GPT for O mini, so it's very cheap to run. I managed to achieve this with a complex prompt. Now, this is the respond to me node. So after Emily completes a task or finds an answer, this node sends her response back to you on Telegram. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll see you in the next one.